All right. Hey, now, everybody, we're back. Brand new take aim and excited to have my longtime buddy on with me, Scotty Campbell from Top O Texas Outfitters in the Texas Panhandle. What's happening, Scotty? Not much, man. <clears throat> I, I thought I was uh, kind of trying to uh, beat this weather until I talked to you. It's just it's crazy, but, but doing good. We're having absolutely frosty temperatures here in Michigan. And me and Scotty talked earlier today. It's minus 39. It was minus 37 with the wind chill earlier, but now it's minus 39 with the wind chill. So um, it's pretty dang cold out, and you definitely don't want to be outside in this crap. <laughs> For sure, not me. It's uh, I thought 18 was cold this morning, but uh, I'll take it. Yeah, it's got to go uh, about uh, almost 60 degrees for us to get to 18. So how crazy <laughs> is that? <laughs> uh, I love Texas. Yeah, I don't blame you, man. So, Scotty, <laughs> <laughs> tell me a little bit, man, about uh, just how cool the whole panhandle area of Texas is and kind of the area you're in is kind of just, um, I just want to say almost like underrated in the terms of like nationwide knowledge of how great some of the deer hunting is and and why you kind of think it is so good down there oh you know it is it, uh it's, it's kind of the kind of the hidden you know most people think of texas you think of south texas and the brush country and and which it's awesome but uh it's uh big ranches uh quite a bit of agriculture you know i think i think things kind of uh, i can't i think that kind of helps our deer get, get through the winter with with just the agriculture we have and then uh you know the genetics are pretty good uh, uh these, these deer up here are kind of the kansas strain of deer uh, bigger body big just good it's, i don't know i think it's pretty good genetics and, and then a lot it's everything up here obviously like in texas is private you know and that certainly helps a lot when when you got big chunks of land for, for a deer to get age on yeah, for sure. And and uh, to hit on a little bit, Scotty, like what you're talking about, agriculture, what kind of ag do you guys mostly have down there? Man, 90% of the ag here is, is wheat, and, and it's, of course, the deer have to compete with cattle a little bit, but uh, um, but 90% of it is it's wheat, uh, and, and these it's it's mostly used for grazing out, you know, just growing cattle on. So. Mm. So that you know, I think it helps. Like this time of year, right now, especially when these deer need need things most, this uh, all these uh, wheat and rye and kind of kind of helps the deer through. Yeah, for sure it does. And you know, I know you just mentioned it, but I want to dig a little deeper into what you said about ranches. Like when you say ranch, that's what they say in that part of the country in the south. Us up here in the Midwest instantly think it's a place that's fenced in or penned in. But that's just what you guys call properties down there, as we call them farms up here. You guys call them ranches because lots of times they're working cattle ranches and cowboy ranches. And um, But what you were saying about private land, Scotty, one of the big, you know, huge differences, and it relates to any, if you're really into deer hunting, you're, it totally speaks volume about private land is you guys have i mean what would you call it scotty i mean like you have private land owners that sometimes own a small section would be 500 and you have them up to what fifteen thousand acres oh yeah bigger than that you know bigger like man I'm, I'm i'm pretty blessed like a lot of my country uh is is one, one neighbor particularly that, that that borders me on like three sides and shoot he's got like sixty thousand acres and uh, a, a super avid hunter uh, knows all the management tools, and and uh, <laughs> is a good neighbor to have, man. I tell you, it's uh, but but for the most part, like in this part of the world, it's it's if you're a cattle rancher, you know you, you're going to have pretty good tracts of land. I'd say you know like like a small deal here would be be a, a, a section which is 640 acres, and 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 on up to you know the the 15, 20, 30,000, 50,000 acres acre uh, deal yeah that's huge i mean for those that don't know and correct me if i'm wrong scotty but a section is like uh a mile square right 640 correct it's yep 640 acres it's one square mile so imagine that guys if you're you know if you're <laughs> lucky enough to hunt a piece like that literally you know a mile of ground to go mess around and play on is is, is huge 
many times that by what Scotty's saying, he has a neighbor that owns 60,000 acres. I mean, I can't imagine um, just miles and miles of in, endless ground. And, I mean, pretty simple, man. You can't kill all those deer. They get a lot of spots to hide, and they get some age on them, don't they, Scotty? I guarantee you. You know, I, I, we, I, I kid my, my neighbor's a, he's a good friend of mine, and, and I, I kid with him a lot. I'm like, man, you got deer on here. You, they die of old age you've never even seen before. But uh, but it certainly it certainly lets lets these deer uh, uh, you, you get get the age structure, you know. Um, and and like on my deal, we we try not to shoot anything under five and a half years old. And and uh, anyway, these deer they just get the opportunity to 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 get the most out of them anyway. Yeah, for sure. Another neat thing is that, you know Texas has I would say in my opinion and and probably in yours too, Scotty. You guys kind of started the wave of like quality deer management so would you say like your neighbors are kind of on board is everybody kind of educated about you know trying to get those deer to to hit that five year five and a half year old range before you guys start taking some out yeah for sure uh man that's that's a that's a big deal that that we're not everybody does it but man i'm super blessed and and where i live at and where i hunt at that uh uh, my neighbors are like they they've been doing it forever you know i, I guess i don't know it, it's uh you know out here to be to be a to be a good cattle rancher you're you're ultimately a a, a grass farmer really so you know and, and and everything that benefits from you being a good grass farmer uh certainly uh, uh and it enhances uh everything that you know to to be a good cow guy you you're going to be a good deer guy right yeah, for sure. I noticed, you know, when I've been down with you a couple of times that every piece of ground, whether it's on top or in the bottom, if it's flat, you guys have some winter wheat on it. <laughs> I mean, more or less. <laughs> Correct. Man, I'll tell you this year, uh, like like a bunch of my country, uh, uh, which I lease a, a lot of it, but uh, uh, the guy leased from one particular place this year, we tried a whole new deal, and, and we particularly for like he's a cattle rancher so it was uh it was about his cattle but man i certainly uh i reaped the rewards as a deer hunter on it was uh we put it we put probably six eight hundred acres in in um turnip uh fetishes and then with wheat at like a mixture and man it was phenomenal <laughs> that is phenomenal i know you know we're going to get into some of your your personal deer hunts here in a minute, but um, me and you have always talked over the years, and one thing that you know I've always stuck out in my mind, Scotty, when we talked is you always talk about good years and bad years, and you relate that to moisture. We always talk about it as up here we're just afraid of EHD, where you don't get it down there really, but um, you are a big believer in those moisture years just relates to good ant antler growth, so. In your opinion, Scotty, how was last year, and how do you feel like you're looking going into this year? You know, right now it's 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 pretty good. We got a lot of ground moisture. Um, we've had oh, I've probably had 10, 10, 11 inches of snow throughout the year and some rain mixed in. So that's that's awesome to get us through the winter, and then uh, hopefully get some some spring rains early and get some of the, you know get that get that antler growth started good. Uh, our deer. Like we we're not dropping antlers yet. It's primarily in in like April, March, mid March to to April when we really drop antlers. And uh, if we can get some rain uh, with some ground going through the winter, man, it it it'll it'll really help us out. Uh, and and this too up here, I've seen you know over all the years, if we get just a, just an okay year, it, it seems we we have our best growth as far as like just enough rain to 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 kind of drag us through uh, for for whatever. I was talking to David Morris about it. He uh, with with Bucks of Tecumati and and uh, we can get too much rain up here, and, and it certainly washes you know washes the nutrients from the soil. Right. Uh, I think it was two or three years ago we had like I had like 30 inches of rain, which I average about 20 here <clears throat> on a, on a regular year, and. I thought, man, 30 inches of rain, it was, grass was deep and beautiful and green, and, and I thought, man, well, this is going to be an awesome year, but it really turned out that it that wasn't, 
it wasn't that great. And and even even in speaking as a cattle rancher, uh, you know, because ultimately I'm shipping pounds of beef. Even the cattle weights were off that year. It did mm, really, really have the nutrients. Yeah, it's wow. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, that is. That is really crazy. Yeah, that, that's funny. Um, which we've talked about too. You, your guys' soil is pretty, you know, pretty dang rich down there, so to speak, and a lot of deer benefit off that the mineral content in that ground. And uh, you've always told me that even you've noticed with your cattle, you know, just the mineral is so important to your cattle, you know, just from the soil. So it would make sense that it kind of washes it, or, or you know, it probably takes it deeper in the soil, makes it harder to get to, obviously, when you get that kind of rain. 30 inches down there for you guys is pretty pretty excessive because it, it you know it's a mostly a dry habitat and it soaks it up pretty good for sure it's uh it's uh it's definitely you know it's pretty arid here but like like I think my house 2700 feet so it's we're kind of up there for as far as Texas goes and um but yeah we uh if we can do 18 inches a year uh, life will be good yeah, for sure. No, yeah, I mean, that's another cool thing that we haven't spoke about yet, but you you think of Texas, you kind of think of exactly what you you mentioned earlier about the elevation. You think of it a lot more flat. You're in, you're in an area that is really diverse with the terrain, which makes it beautiful. And, uh, you know, I hunted a spot with you, you know, a few years back, Scotty, that um, basically, remember, I walked in off the road in that um uh, winter wheat field was really a bottom, and I sat basically up on that cliff trying to bow hunt. Yeah. And yeah. and man, I said I don't want to fall off this thing. You you would you'd be in really bad shape if you fell off one of these, um, <laughs> <laughs> one of these cliffs here. I mean, they get deep and it's rocky, and uh, you just don't think of uh, you know Texas like that, so to speak. But man, it's beautiful, and and the train is so diverse. I mean, some spots I've been with you, it's flat as a pancake, and you go over there, and it's like um, rocky, jagged, and uh, some of the most, you know, just beautiful ground you've ever seen. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty. You know, it, it it's. I'll tell you where it, where it makes its transitions is is between the rivers, like the breaks off the rivers, and like I. Where, where I hunt is on the, on the uh, north breaks of the would be the Salt Fork of the Red River, <clears throat> and and uh, wherever those where you know a mile mile and a half or so two miles off of those rivers, man, it gets gets pretty rough. Uh, you know, kind of broke up country canyons and cedars and pretty pretty neat pretty neat stuff. I sure like it a lot. Isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's some of the prettiest ground I've ever seen, and. Um, obviously some of that rough terrain like that makes it really good for deer hunting and you know what's cool about your area scotty is so diverse man it's crazy when i talk deer it's mostly whitetail but you guys got some of the best mule deer i think maybe in the state and uh, you've sent me pictures of elk free range elk just walking by before and uh you know one thing that's been on my lifelong bucket list to do is kill an odd dad and you occasionally have odd dad so i mean it's just crazy to think of the diversity in in the country you're at there down there yeah it's uh pretty cool man because you get you, you know, like the odd dad for instance you can hunt them anytime you know there's no there's no season on them and elk for that matter which i don't see a ton of elk but you you never know here uh there's little pockets of them here and there but uh uh it, it gives you something to do uh certainly year round and of course, uh, mule deer. We we have little pockets of mule deer scattered, and that's uh, that's my favorite. I, I, I love chasing the mule. Deer. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second, but uh, let's talk real quick, Scotty, about the Audad. I mean, last year you killed just a whopper of an Audad, and uh, I just think such a neat animal to hunt. You know, so crazy looking for one. It, it's absolutely beautiful with these big curling horns and big mane. You know. I, underneath the bottom of his chin down to, you know, the bottom of his chest. But uh, it's just one of those animals where, you know, there's not almost, Scotty, like there's not a lot of science behind, like, how to hunt them. It's either you got them or you don't, and you don't have a prayer if they're not around. I mean, you know, those things are they're super nomadic. I mean, they, they uh, absolutely 
zero like a deer, you know, pattern a deer. Other than they like rougher country. They like the rough, rimrocky type country. Uh, the steeper, the better. But uh, uh, I got a, quite a bit of country there, and, and, and you, you may go in there this week and see, then you might not see them for a week. Uh, they just, uh, wherever they wherever they land that day, they're happy with it. <laughs> it's crazy. That is crazy. But, I mean, you shot a tank of one. So what happened on that hunt, Scotty, when you ended up killing that, that big odd ass? Man, it was uh, it was it was cool. It was fun. I I'd, I'd actually I, I was I had my bow. Uh, I was I was looking for muleys, and uh, I kind of I thought, man, I, I'll throw my gun in because I've made several several stalks on those odd ass. They're with, with my bow, and uh, you know they usually run in pretty big groups, fifteen, eighteen, twenty of them, and and boy, you got that many eyeballs on you. It is. Uh, it can it can be tough, <laughs> especially in like this road in plains here. There is where where my odd at is is no brush. It's just cliffs and and super. It's rough country, but it's it's really open country. And uh, anyway, I did, I had the gun gun in my with me that day, and and I eased up in this place. I always see muleys and look over and like man, they're they are bedded. And I thought, oh, you know, uh, don't. No way possible to get any closer than, than to them than, than I was. I think it was 150 yards. And, well, it's a pretty good ram. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this over with, and, and then I can focus solely on mule deer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. So um, got him knocked over, and and uh, it was crazy, man. He was he was uh, as as big a body odd ads I'd ever seen. He he was not not the biggest horns, but certainly big bodied. Shot him down in a canyon, and I didn't have a pack with me or anything that day, and and uh, so I was like, I couldn't move him, couldn't get him out of there, and and so finally I called one of my buddies. I said, Hey, I need uh, I need some help. Get up here. And so it took him an hour to get to me, and and we kind of picked a trail in there, and and uh, actually drove a drove a quad in there and got him out. It was uh, it it wasn't easy, but he was huge body. Huge body. I don't. Do you do you have an idea what that thing weighs, Scotty? I mean, it, it's I, well I would, over two fifty. It's got to be. I would. I would say two fifty, two seventy, probably two seventy five. That, that yeah. was a huge sheep. They're, he, they're he, big. You know, just the bone in them is nice. You know, they're they're like their like their leg bones is huge. real massive. Yeah, big bone yeah. density. Yeah. Very very almost, very. Small. Almost makes sense, right? Because. I would assume the way they walk and, you know, a lake could go in a hole, so to speak, and they're probably just built like that for a reason so they don't break bones, you know what I mean? But, uh, I, I, they, man, they, in, in climb, uh, like, like nothing. Crazy. Yes. I, I was a couple of years ago, I was in the Powder Canyon, which is south of Amarillo. It's a, uh, I don't know if you know, but it's, it's the second largest canyon in the United States. Which is huge. And, uh, yeah, and it it's like crazy rough. Um, it's it's uh, it's I mean it's the Grand Canyon, but it's it's rough. And anyway, long story. I I, I we bed these sheep one night, and and come back next morning. We find them, and and I'm of course I'm rifle hunting and kind of get them in this little boxed out canyon deal. And there's I bet it's I bet this 500 foot cliff behind them. And I thought, man, like they got to either run over me. Or, or I'll get him, you know, if I shoot. And and it's kind of they just figuring it out that you know like something was up, so I couldn't get very much closer anyway. I missed the sheep, and uh, uh, I thought, well, shoot, I missed. They'll turn, run right at me. Now they went up this this. I mean, I don't know how they went up a cliff. It was like a rock climber would would have had a hard time getting up. It was crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> It's what they do, though, you know, and how they live, and I think that's what makes it such a neat trophy and, uh, and like what you alluded to earlier, makes it almost so hard to kill one with a bow. You know, they run in big groups and, like you said, so many eyes and ears and um, just some of that steep country, you just you, you can't get that close to them, it seems, hardly ever. You just very rarely hear about a bow hunter. Not that it can't be done, but you just don't hear very often a bow hunter getting one, getting it done with uh, stick and string. That's right. You know, and I, I guess 
I see where some people put feeders and things out maybe and get those sheep where they come to those and I guess get it done. But, like, I don't I don't work all that country I have. I don't run any feeders or do any of that kind of thing. I, I have to spot and stalk, and it's uh, – it's it's tough to bow, uh, but man, it's certainly a, a great challenge and fun. Yeah, it is for sure. But I know that uh, that's a good lead into your mule deer because you were actually out scouting for mule deer, and man, you put a shot on a great mule deer down there. And I just want to talk about some of the details of that hunt and how you ended up, you know, getting the job done, so to speak, with the bow. Man, that was uh, it was uh. Luck, thank goodness, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> have lots of luck on their side. But, uh, of course, we got a lot of a lot of deer. But that particular day, again, I was just kind of trying to cover some country and, and glass and, and just find something bedded, you know, obviously to do with a bow. And, and it was pretty darn warm that day, like like 90-degree warm. And, Whoa. and windy, super windy. Uh, I, I had, like, I, I don't know. I bet I bet the wind was blowing thirty miles an hour. It was it was just howling. And anyway, kind of kind of just in the uh, the south side to to kind of move and uh, just hit some high spots and and set up in glass for them. Anyway, I just we just uh, my, my buddy John Gibb, you know John. He he uh, he was with me, and of course my wife was with me, and uh, we we were. Uh, Kind of headed up this little hill anyway. John's like, man, I just seen a set of forks go over the hill out there. And I guess this deer was on his feet. Well, anyway, we go over to the park and take off and sneak down looking over in these canyons where he bailed. And he's like, man, they just disappeared. And, uh, of course, we were looking right under us. And, and, uh, and my wife, she's like, look back, and she's up on the hill waving. She's like, across the canyon way, they deer made a mile across that king there I, he was a little more spooked than what we thought but anyway it was uh it was pretty awesome we 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 um like had the wind and he he had done settled down and went to feeding and and uh and john uh, the camera guy so we, we had the camera and he he we decided for him to set on uh, set up with a camera on this side of the on the side of the canyon we were on and and I said, man, I got to loop all the way around. It was about a mile around the head of that canyon and get to him. And and uh, my old John's like, you just keep your eye on him and see, see. Hopefully, hopefully he stays there. And so anyway, I make my way around the canyon and then over him, and I kind of knew where he was and uh, eased up over the uh, eased up over the rim rock there. And man, he's standing on the bottom feet and and uh, ranged him and uh, put it on him and. Uh, made a good shot, luckily. <laughs> so from the time you guys, let's back up a little bit, Scotty. Were, were, do you guys do a lot of the your glassing or whatever from, like, the vehicle, from the road? Or Quite a the, bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. You know, you're just trying, to, just trying to cover just try to cover all the country you can. And, and, like, as you know, you've been here, there's quite a, quite a bit of, uh, like, roads on the ranches just simply it's oil field traffic. Road. Right, it's like the two only tracks thing on there. Yeah, them, two yeah. tracks, correct. And so, yeah, I just try to try to cover as much country as you can. You know, obviously trying to find a, a mature deer or the deer that you want, and and uh, just try to hit the high spots and and set up glass, glass, and go. You know, go. You find something. So that deer went over that ridge, and you said he ended up creating what sounded like a gap of a mile. Did you guys move positions, or did you? Stay where you were and just made a plan from there to get on them. We we set the, of course John set the camera up. We looked him over and I was like, you know, that's a deer I want to take. He's a nice deer, so uh, that's what we decided. John stayed exactly where we were at once we relocated him, and uh, he sat there with the camera. And then I I had to go all the way around the head of the canyon, which was a mile or so, and. Uh, to move in on him, you know, obviously with a with a bow to get within bow range, and man, it worked out. He was just under a bluff, and I guess it was because it was so windy that day. It was it, there was zero wind down in there where we, where that deer was at? Everybody asks, like, how did you make that shot? Uh, looking at the at the film, is that grass is laying over? But once I kind of got off the edge down on on the on that rim rock or on the ledge of that cliff, that deer below me, I was. I was really out of the wind, 
and, and he certainly was. So <clears throat> anyway, he uh, arranged him. I think he was 46 yards and made a good shot. We got it all on video. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, that no, I mean that's a heck of a shot. 40, 46 yards isn't close by any means. And uh, how far away was John from you as he was filming, Scotty? I'm going to say he was probably 500 yards. Oh, okay. So, yep, so the canyon kind of, on a rock. Yeah, so he kind of captured where the buck was laying and you kind of doing the whole spot and stalk thing. Yeah, you know, we didn't get the shot in one frame, but, like, he, he would he would pan from me to the deer, and it's it's funny. Like, I, I, don't, I haven't done a lot of filming for myself or anything. Heck, I don't get to hunt a ton for myself, as you know. Right. But um, that uh, he, he, he <laughs> you can see me easing along that ledge looking for him, and then you, you can – you can dang sure tell when I see him. I'm like, whoa, there he is. So I kind of ducked down and dug my range finder out, you know, and then kind of got it, got range on him there. And then I kind of like tried to pull back, leaned over where he can see me and, and stand up and, and look over the cliff at him. But yeah, which, uh, was course, he facing away yeah. from you, Scotty? So it gave you the opportunity. Man, he was, he was quartered away from me super hard. Okay. And, and, and like I just, and he was kind of feeding away and I, I, you know, I just like basically get, get it now. You know, I felt confident in the shot. And so anyway, I just, I kind of like dropped that old pin right behind the, behind that rib, you know, to me and tr- between the hind quarter and the rib. And, and, uh, and well, I was, I was super happy when I seen that knot go out of sight. And of course he kicked, you know, and, and John had panned down to the deer from uh from me and and got him you know kicking in there and and taking off and he ran around probably run 50 60 yards down through there and boom and he fell over and and he when he in that 50 or 60 yards from where i was standing it was uh i i could i thought he went down but i wasn't sure if it was a little hump that he went over or he went down but i knew it hit him good anyway uh so john texted and or I texted John, I said, did, did I get him, or did, he, did you get that? And he said, yeah, I got it all. I got, I got him falling over on, on the on the shot. And I said, well, heck, yeah. So I wasn't sure. But anyway, it was uh, it was That's fun. cool. So that gave you some relief. At least you knew he was down. Yeah, he was down. So, yeah, we pack up and come all the way around the, back around the head of the canyon there and, and uh, grab John and the camera, and we head to him and, I was pumped, man. It was a, it was a, no super monster deer, but for a Texas deer, he was nice. Oh, that's super good mule deer, man. I'd be happy with that from Texas to Alberta. And, uh, I mean, you know, and I know, Scotty, I mean, you got bigger ones than that mule deer wise down there. There's some sleeper mule deer down in that area that are just giants. There, there are, man. I tell you, I don't, I know you, you, seen the pictures my wife she killed a stud this year for, oh, for yeah. our part of the world it was a great year yeah i'm sure but, dad uh, was happy with that one right <laughs> yeah she was pretty dang tickled she's, <laughs> she's got the mule deer bug now so i i guess uh i don't know i told her i was like you i guess start applying <laughs> on them it's uh you know we have so many white tails here and it just is something uh, which I something different always it's it's different you know and 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 like, and like I was telling you earlier we don't got just tons of those mule deer kind of in pockets here and we don't have this a ton of them but the ones we do have man we we nurture them you know we let them grow and, and like it made I hadn't that's the first mule deer I'd shot in I don't know probably four three years I guess yeah, three years, and, yeah. and so kind of, you know, we try to watch them and let them grow, and hope they don't leave. I had one, I had a deer, man, it's a crazy story. Uh, my uh, Again, this is my neighbor I was talking about earlier that with the big, it had all the 50,000 acres, 60,000 acres. He, uh, it's been a year before last, I had, to, I had a deer that was, it was like religiously never left me there all the time, and so uh opening day had him 60 yards and uh i thought man i'm on i i, I actually called my son Wes, and i said i, I think uh, i got this deer here at 60 yards i said man i think i might give him one more year see what he does of course he said i don't know he's he's mature he said that deer's old enough I, i'd shoot him and I, he said but do what you want you know it's just your call heck you don't never go anywhere 
Well, <laughs> I was wrong. Let him go. Thought, you know, I'll not worry about it. Well, about two weeks later, uh, my neighbor calls me that morning. He said, man, I got a really nice muley this morning. And I said, oh, yeah, where at? And he tells me, you know, and it's like five miles from where he, on his place where he gets him to, to where I was had him for three years watching him grow. No and way. and just got got behind a hot dough, you know, and she took him off and and uh, anyway he sent me the picture of it and I was like, Oh man, he <laughs> he shot my deer and of course we had a big laugh about it. And he said, Is that the deer you've been talking about? And I said, Yeah. So anyway it was a it was a hundred and seventy inch deer. I said, I'm a dummy for not taking him and, and the deer turned out to be, Brandon, it do turn out to be like seven and a half years old, you know. Oh no way. Yeah. Looking at yeah, man, I like oh going, I thought, you know, I was thinking four or five and 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 he it actually turned out to be seven and a half and so you never know. But hey, I was uh, proud of my neighbor, man. He's very deserving. Yeah, that's really cool. And you know, I, I was gonna ask you that actually, Scotty, about aging some of the mule deer down there because mule deer just are naturally bigger bodied anyways. Have you you know, unless you have one on your ranch, so to speak, and you see them year to year, have you noticed, you know, just ever having a hard time trying to age some of them? I, you know, I, I do, Brandon. I I just, like, because I don't, we don't have so many of them, uh, the, the, my, the, the way I age them is, is just by keeping up with them and, and, and watching them grow from nothing to, you know, okay, I know him. I've known this deer for the last four years, five years, or whatever. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's my aging tool. Uh, yeah. Because it's hard. You know, obviously, like once I get super mature, you can you know pot bellied, sway back. Uh, uh, we we took some deer last year that you know they look he, like he was just so obvious, looked like an old old man, old horse. What you could just tell they were super old. The way they walked, moved. Uh, but but far as the, from that three to five year mark, man, that's yeah, pretty tough for me. That's what I was asking. Yep, three to five, exactly that. Yeah, it's so hard to tell. I would assume it is, anyways. And and it, and like my muleys, like they, it's hard to get them on camera uh, uh, a ton. I, I I I get them some, but not. I don't get just a ton of pictures of them on camera. Uh, for 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 instance, like. I got you know I got feeders set up everywhere for for whitetail deer, but those muleys just they don't they don't fool with a feeder. They just will not come around them. I and I don't know if it's because the you know they're shy of the whitetail. I don't know what the reasoning is, but they just aren't interested. So and and it gives me something to do, man. I enjoy you know with the spotting scope and the binos and the phone scope anymore. I just we spend a ton of time out just watching them all the time. Yeah, I know, uh, I don't know if you remember, Scotty, but last time I was there, we, we ended up seeing, it was off that asphalt road, and it was like right under a water tank, there were two mm -hmm. big mule deers, we ended up seeing that, I mean, one of them was just giant, like probably touching, one, you know, high 170s, 180s, but uh, they were just off the road like 50 yards, like no big deal, you know? Just yeah, kinda, you know, we ended up... Uh, that one, the one you're talking about, is a deer that Wes ended up getting that year. Yeah, that's what I thought. I wasn't sure if he that was one of them, but I thought because they had big uh, winter wheat fields across the road, right? If I remember Correct. right, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I and that and that land that was across the road where that wheat field was was my, my land. It might have been the next year, that year, whatever. But Wes got him, and it's funny, you know, because our season, our especially our rifle season, <clears throat> is is super limited it's only like a two-week season for the muleys and uh so anyway we were already hunting whitetails and I, I i told those guys like man i i, I i'm on them that deer right there if i see, get the opportunity and and you know during season i'm gonna take him and so anyway i was that it was opening day i think it was maybe maybe second day of season of uh, the mule deer season and and Anyway, I was I was hunting with my wife whitetails. Of course, we're sitting there, and I get this phone call, and uh, it, it was my son Wes, and he said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, you're hunting." He said, well, "You're going to be mad at me," and I said, "Why? What happened?" He said, 
uh, I got a nice deer right near out there. I said, did you shoot my mule deer? And he's like, yeah. He was uh, he was down there. I seen him, you know, spotted him and made a stalk on him and, and got him and all that. And I was like, well, I can't be too mad. I was, he was a super nice deer. Oh, it was a super nice deer, yeah. And congrats to Wes. That's cool. You know, super <laughs> cool. So I'm sure he was excited. I was, you know. I was like, well, dang it. You know, I guess it's okay to keep it in the family. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right man well i know uh i'm excited for this year to come down and see you and, and uh me and you are going to do it together and get after some deer so i hope you're ready i am ready man i am ready it's uh it's uh it's i i enjoy i enjoy hunting these muleys with my bow more than and i don't want to say more than elk but i, I certainly like it that's my favorite too yeah yeah i i know that uh it 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 adds a whole, I mean, you know me, Scott, man, I love my whitetails, but uh, that once you kind of get a taste, especially as a bow hunter, to spot and stalk something, it gets real addicting. And that uh, is. And I think that's, that's right. all it is, is just being able to get out and and uh, spot and stalk them and move on them, and it's a whole new kind of adrenaline. And, uh, man, it gets addicting. That's it's It just is what it is. It's addicting. For sure. You know, and I, like, my archery season for for the mule deer is like a month long, so it's it's I get a a lot of time, uh, and, and the rifle season is is so much shorter. And then I'm I'm usually like super busy with with clients, you know, during during our mule deer rifle season. So uh, I don't I don't uh, don't get to spend a ton of time chasing those muleys, and I, I only only do very very limited amount of of uh mule deer hunt as far as clients goes uh try to try to uh keep that you know for for us something to do especially with the archery deal um but man it is it's a uh, it's addicting getting the sheep boat oh yeah that's super cool man but uh i'm super excited to have you on man and i'm super excited that uh you know you were kind of taking more time for yourself to hunt and uh i just love you know talking to you and we get to uh kind of share some of these stories and just hear you so fired up about hunting again just makes me excited and I'm happy for you that you're getting out and chasing more uh, aside the business you know that you're getting out and doing it for yourself so I'm super happy for you well I appreciate it you know I, I appreciate you having me on I didn't tell you that but uh that uh it, it's uh you know I'm not getting any younger Brandon it's uh there's a lot of things I want to do yet it's, uh, I hear that, man. Uh, it's going by too quick, and uh, you know we live and by live and die, so to speak, as hunters by dates and and seasons. And uh, man, they're 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 going by so fast that uh, I mean, me and you talked about it. I think a week ago, just you know, we can't stop the clock. We just got to start grinding a little more and a little faster, and and try to achieve some of these goals. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's one thing I, I made a commitment to myself uh, uh, last year. Like, man, I'm going to cut back on the business, which I'm fortunate. It's been good, and I love love the, the people, the, the atmosphere, and, and, and my job. You know, it's a, it's a good job. I get to get to enjoy it. But, uh, uh, you know, I, man, since I'm 18 years old, I've been chasing these deer around for other people, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to I wanna do some me hunting, so I've I've made a commitment to myself. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch for me and then like get to hunt, you know, with my family, got a grandson that, that kind of starting to loves to go. And of course he's young yet, but loves to go and, and be a part of it. And then, uh, and then like our elk hunts and our, our mule deer hunts that I go out of state and do, I get to do with my son Wes and man, that's, uh, you know, that makes it, that makes it all all worthwhile, and, and and of course some good friends. John, I was telling you about earlier. He's uh, uh, him, and you know, there's another guy or two that, that it's just good company, good fun, kill something or not. Just being being out in the being out in the great outdoors, man, is the it's the best part. And doing it doing it for yourself. Yeah, there's nothing better, man, for sure. You know, it's nice to have camp with good guys and and uh, people we enjoy being around and. It kind of goes hand in hand with with the actual act of the hunting, is uh, you know spending spending that time with guys that love like to do it as much as you do, and um, you know that's I don't know 
that's just part of, uh, I guess, why we love it so much. You know, it just it's good <laughs> memories and good times. Yeah, it's challenging, you know. It's uh, you, you, you know, I've sat around here in, in my in my older age, and kind of gotten out of shape, you know. When, when of course, you know, you know, my dad was an outfitter in Montana, and I worked for him for twelve, fourteen years there, and I always took being in shape for granted because I was young. And then, uh, you know, you sit around in whitetail camp here doing what I do, and uh, one day I'm like, man, this ain't cool. So anyway, long story, we've been we've been doing the backcountry backpack hunts here the last few years, and and uh, it's a it's a great incentive to to uh, get in better shape. You know, of course that that leads to uh, uh, leads to a whole whole lot of doors opening for his personal. You know, just personally oh, yeah. being in better shape, and health. No, for sure, man. And I applaud you for doing that. And uh, I know when you sent me pictures this year, I couldn't believe the transformation in you. Uh, you know, I, I noticed right away, and I was like, holy cow, I got to talk to Scotty about the regimen he's been doing because, man, it's really worked. But uh, there isn't a better motivator in my mind if you like to hunt, uh, you know, is uh, use that, you know, as your will and your kind of your drive to, you know, want to get in shape and, uh you know, just it. You know, Scotty, as well as I do, man. It just it pays off dividends. Just with even just a ten pound backpack, it pays off dividends. Just how you feel, oh, it's, and it's it's everything. It is, man. It's a it's, it is it's super cool. You know, I, I, I kid I kid everybody. Like you know, my hunting partner's like Wes. He's twenty eight years old. I think John's thirty. Man, I'm I'm a, I'm fifty two and running around with all these kids. Uh, if I'm going to keep up with them in the Elk Mountains, and the, uh, I've I got to do something. So I work, I'll, I, you know, no no, no secret plan or anything, man. I just try to load my pack up and do something every day. And, and of course, I have to uh, certainly watch my diet. And uh, you just feel better. I just feel a lot better, man. I, I'm 52, you know, and I played all sports when I was young, done everything, and, like, but I don't, I don't have any, no knee issues. I just, I don't have any pains or anything like that. Like, uh, you, like you hear of you know, guys my age having. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, part of that is just the doing it and uh, sticking to it, you know. And I know so many guys that, you know, between my age and your age, and gosh, you would think they, I mean, they, they're, they're through the ringer. It seems, and and some of that, I just want to tell them, man, you, you just got to exercise, lose some weight, and all that joint pain, back pain, and I mean that's a whole nother podcast, I guess. But uh, <laughs> but there's a lot a lot of truth to that for sure. But um, you know, uh, before we go though, Scotty, I want you to kind of let everybody know where they can find you, social media, your Instagram and Facebook, and and how to reach out to you if they got questions about coming down and doing some whitetail hunting with you. You bet, man. It's uh. It's- uh, the Instagram is is top uh, underscore o underscore Texas Outfitters, uh, and then Facebook page is top of Texas Outfitters. I don't do, as you know, I don't get it do a ton of average. I don't have a website and all that. We man, we've been just blessed for all these years of, of being born being born into this uh, business, and then and this word of mouth, you know, uh, uh, repeat cut ninety five percent of my deals repeat. So. Uh, we're pretty blessed. So I don't do a ton of advertising or anything like that, but uh, uh, look us up on the social media. Face we have a Facebook page and then the, the Instagram deal. And and uh, anybody anybody looking for a super quality uh, hunt, uh, we'd be we'd be glad to accommodate you. Yeah, for sure. And and as well as if if you got questions, you can get with me, and I'll get you in touch with Scotty. But Nowadays, got it with your Instagram and as many great pictures as you got up. You don't really need a website, so you're you're on the right track anyway. So, uh, and having those repeat repeat customers is the way to go. That means you're doing something right. So if it's hard to get into a place, you know you're hunting with a good outfitter. <laughs> well, uh, we we try hard. You know, we hunt hard. That's that's the only thing we can guarantee, or or that's the only thing we have to offer. You know, is just. Uh, working hard for you so it, and it's fun man I, you know like i say you, i don't i don't have to wake up and hate going to my job every day no no you certainly don't which is a great thing and uh i know uh when we 
I get down there this fall, Scotty. We're gonna I'll bring the uh, equipment. And we're gonna do some podcasts from camp and uh, hopefully talk about some some back straps on the grill. Heck yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> sounds like a great plan, Brandon. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for being with me today. And as everybody knows, you can find us every week on iTunes, Pod Bros, and the Unfiltered Outdoor app. And uh, make sure to check out Top of Texas Facebook, Top of Texas Outfitters Instagram. And uh, Scotty, we'll chat again soon. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Appreciate it, buddy. Absolutely. Pleasure, man. Thanks. You bet.